would you do if you were elected about Aleppo? About? Aleppo. And what is Aleppo? You're kidding. No. Aleppo is in Syria. It's the, uh, it's the epicenter of the refugee crisis. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Well, when there is a lot of discussion about the war in Syria, I think the nature of how we are informed through news agencies and short daily updates makes it hard to get an overview of the bigger situation. So this video is all about giving that overview. This is the Syrian war mapped. The war in Syria didn't start out of nowhere. When you look at Syria on a map, it is important to understand that it is positioned in the center point of very different cultures. The Mediterranean Sea area, Egypt, Anatolia, today Turkey, the Mesopotamia region, as well as the Persian land on the east and Arab in the south, from which the religion of Islam spread in the 7th century. Throughout its history, Syria has been controlled and influenced by very different powers. Its capital, Damascus, is often listed as the oldest continuously inhabited city on the entire planet. Early mentions of the city go back to 1500 before Christ. Because of its strategically advantageous location, sheltered by mountains and supplied with water by the Barada River, it became the capital of the huge Islamic empire ruled by the Umayyad in the 7th century. Today, even if it is mostly controlled by the government, there is a war in the historic city. A war that is now in its sixth year and is more complex than ever before. I am a Palestinian Syrian playing music in Yarmouk. How did this happen? After the First World War, France and Great Britain redraw the lines in the Middle East. Syria was controlled by France, combining many different ethnic and religious groups into one country. In today's Syria, 90% of the population are Arabs, 9% are Kurds in the northern regions. And in the two biggest cities of Aleppo and Damascus, there is a larger Armenian population as well. Most of the citizens are Muslims, although there are also larger Christian and Druze populations. 70% of Muslim population in Syria is being Sunni, 3% being Shia and 13% being Alevis, who separated from Shia and are despised among Sunni and Shia populations. However, the current government is ruled by an Alevis family under President Bashar al-Assad. The country has experienced a steady economic growth since the 1990s, from which half of the GDP comes from agriculture and oil. But the gap between big economic centers of the country and smaller, mostly Sunni and Shia regions has been growing as well. And so those were the regions in which people started protesting in 2011. Inspired by similar movements in Tunisia, Egypt and Yemen, the people in Dara went on the streets and demanded the end of the Assad regime. The protests soon expanded to more cities and were brutally fought by the government. Since then, a lot has changed in the war and Syria turned into an immense humanitarian catastrophe. So let's look at who is fighting who. Note that this video is made mid-October 2016. Essentially, there are four different militant groups fighting each other. The Syrian government, opposition groups, the so-called Islamic State and the Kurdish Rojava. The Syrian government under President Assad controls most of western Syria as well as the entire coastline. It is in direct combat with the rebels, several civil opposition groups that are commonly described as the Free Syrian Army. Their goal is to overthrow Assad. But after 2012, the Free Syrian Army split up into several, in some cases very opposing groups, from the Al-Nusra Front, which are radical Islamists similar to the Islamic State, to the new Syrian Army under the National Serial Coalition, a group trained by the CIA fighting against the so-called Islamic State. The Islamic State is a terror organization which originated from Al-Qaeda. 
the so-called IS controls a large part of the region around the Euphrates River, as well as a few bigger cities, most prominently its de facto capital, Al Raqqa. Civilians who live in areas taken over by IS are suppressed by terror, lack basic human rights and have no other option than to join the Islamist radical ideology. The northern part of Syria is controlled by the Kurdish Rojava. During the course of the civil war, the Assad government withdrew from this region and since then local Kurdish militias kept control and fought against the so-called IS and against opposition groups. Rojava has its own constitution, including equal gender rights as well as religious freedom, and it is designed to work as an autonomous region in a potential future unified Syria. Relations between Rojava and the Assad government are pragmatic. Both states are not a threat to the existence of the other. However, there also have been fights between the YPG, Rojava's armed forces, and pro-Assad troops. One of the reasons this conflict has become so complicated is because many global interests are at stake as well. Relations between Syria and its big neighbor, Turkey, have been tense for quite a while. Reasons for that being Syria's support of the Kurdish PKK, as well as a dispute over several Turkish dams which reduce the flow of water through the Euphrates River. During the war, Turkey has been supporting opposition groups and is strongly pushing against autonomous rights for Rojava. The autonomous Kurdish regions of Rojava, however, enjoy a broader global support. The even bigger conflict here is one between the United Nations veto powers, in which two groups have separated, a Western and a Eastern group. The Western coalition is led by the United States and supports the rebels in their fight to get rid of Assad. Russia and China, however, are strong supporters of the Assad government, with Russia actively involved in the war, securing Assad's power and bombing the rebels. Even though there is no direct war between Russian and American soldiers, Syria has turned into a proxy war in which American-backed rebels stand against the Russian-backed government. The most prominent example for that being the city of Aleppo. The eastern part of the city is under rebel control, surrounded by government troops. The rebels deny to give up, therefore the eastern part of the city is bombed by Russian airstrikes, cutting the civilians off from food and medical supply. The victims of this war, thousands of them, are trapped between rebel and government troops. The war has turned into a humanitarian catastrophe. The war has led to over 4.8 million people fleeing their country as refugees, as well as 6.6 .6 million people displaced inside Syria. And since its outbreak in 2011, roughly half a million people were killed. This war is global and it affects us. We can't look away from it. CNN famously asked in an article, what would make you care? Is it the numbers, is it pictures from destruction of cities, or is it stories about people and about survivors that make us care? I am Palestinian Syrian, playing music in Yarmouk and now in München. <laughs> تنادي موت وخيم عبلادي هجرة وقتل وخطف وجوع قلبي تمزع بالضلوع يلي بين الأمم تنادي موت وخيم عبلادي هجرة وقتل وخطف وجوع قلبي تمزع بالضلوع